I sought. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Oh, hide not thou thy face from thy servant. Alleluia. salvation. Whom then shall I fear? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Consider, O Lord, and hear me when I cry unto thee. Alleluia. Unto thee my heart hath said, <coughs> Thy face, Lord, have I sought. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Oh, hide not thou thy face from thy servant. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph into thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ has gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend and with him continually dwell. 
who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle general of Peter, beginning with the seventh verse. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hearing of the epistle. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning with the 26th <clears throat> verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God the service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one. 
one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe in one, one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In our collect, we're already looking ahead on this, the only Sunday in Ascension Tide, to Pentecost, to next Sunday, to Whit Sunday, Pentecost. Leave us not comfortless, but send thine Holy Spirit to comfort us. There's an old painting of St. Michael with a sword behind an army, sort of pushing them forward into battle. The name of the painting is St. Michael Comforting the Troops. And that doesn't make sense to modern ears, but you need to understand that way back when, when they were first translating the Bible into English, and then later, when they came out with the King James Bible in 1611, uh, following the same tradition, they translated the Greek word parakletos as comforter. And so we read in the King James that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the other comforter who will come from the Father. He is a comforter, and the Holy Spirit is the other comforter. Parakletos, paraklete, the same word has been translated advocate, it's been by my brother, he translated it advocate, which tells me that likely that is the best choice in modern English. And similarly, the uh, Revised Standard Version, it translated the counselor, and we read the King James, it says comforter, and you see, we need to think more in terms of that painting that I mentioned to you. Because in modern English, a comforter is either a, a, uh, an easy chair, and what, you know, a reclining easy chair, or it, it's a feather-filled quilt to keep you warm on a cold night. And really, the emphasis and the way they were using the word is in the second syllable of the word comfort, fort as in fortify or strengthen. What we have read both on Thursday and then again today, what we've heard read in the Epistle and Gospels. For each of those days, as well as other scriptures that we've read on these days, shows us to be in a position where we recognize that we have two things, and 
we have our neediness because the arm of flesh cannot do the will of God. And we also have the mission, which is to be the church that preaches the kingdom of God and that is itself a foretaste of it, in a sense, of that kingdom. Though not with its paradisial elements, in the world you shall have tribulation, Jesus told us. In today's gospel, he speaks of persecution. So by the kingdom of God, I'm not saying that at this point we are the manifestation of something that can be called paradise. We are, however, the agents of and should be, therefore, a living demonstration of what it is to be living in the kingdom of God because we are here to do his will, as was his son. In the epistle today, Peter tells us about the weakness that we are in, in a sense, and our need to rely on the graces, the charismata, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the charism of the Holy Spirit, that the church must be, in the proper New Testament sense of what the Greek word means, charismatic. That is to say, I don't mean the charismatic movement, I mean what the word in the Greek means, which is that we are filled with the grace of God that the gifts of God, which is the same word, charis, the gifts of God, the gifts of God, the graces of God, it's the grace of God, it's, it's all from the same word, charisma, that this is what makes us what we are, that we are not dependent on our cleverness, we are not dependent on mere human ability, we're not dependent strictly on worldly wisdom and our own intellectual prowess. We are not dependent on, on our economic status, but on the gifts of God. And in order for us to be that church that we're called to be, we have to take seriously what's in today's epistle. To be sober, to watch unto prayer, have fervent charity among yourselves. Charity shall cover the multitude of sins. The way the church behaves sometimes, it seems that some people are more interested in, in, in exposing or even creating rumors of, but certainly gossiping about people's sins. Uh, there's a great lack of the things that St. Peter's talking about. If we are to be the church that does the will of God, we have to be the way he describes the behavior that God expects of us in today's epistle. Sober people who are praying a fervent charity for one another. They're hospitable rather than grudging and We've received the gift. What gift is that? The gift of the Holy Ghost. And along with that, the gifts that come, because when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, he brings gifts. So he says that we are to minister the same one to another as stewards of the manifold grace of God, or the manifold gifts of God. And the New Testament says a lot about this. You know it does. 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts, the body of Christ, how we are dependent on one another. He says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's not just a, a, an empty statement. It means that you literally can open your mouth as God's voice. And in the church, that is exactly what people are to do when they're doing what I'm doing now, teaching, preaching, proclaiming the word. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. And again, it's all 
for the purpose that God will be glorified through Jesus Christ. The ability which God giveth. You see, the arm of flesh will fail you. Jesus, in going to the right hand of the Father, did not leave us as orphans. He did not leave us here to depend strictly on human power. Whatever ministry we have, and not just the clergy, he's talking here to the whole church, every one in the church is a member of the body of Christ, and everyone has gifts of the Spirit, that are for the common good of God's people. So whatever ministry you have has to be of the ability God gives. Because if all you're doing is offering your human wisdom and your human power and your limited understanding, then you're not, you're not doing the will of God. Because that's not how his kingdom operates. Jesus has gone to the Father's right hand and we see him no more until the day when he comes again in glory to judge the quick and the dead. And in the world we have persecution. And in the world we have tribulation. But we're also agents of God's kingdom and as such, we demonstrate how that kingdom actually operates to an unbelieving world. This is the meaning of what we've been reading these last few Sundays in Scripture. This is the meaning of the Holy Spirit coming and reproving the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. This is what it means that the other comforter, that is the other advocate, the other paracletus comes when Christ goes to the right hand of the Father. The entire story of these last few readings, the entire report of it, the entire message of it, is that we can't do the will of God strictly by our own power and our own ability. And when we try to, that's when we get into trouble. If you believe that the essence of the church is all about what we can accomplish and you leave out God and the power of God, then what's the difference between us and the Rotary Club or the, the Lions Club or whatever these clubs are? You know, What's the difference between us and um, the Water Buffaloes and the Flintstones? I mean... We have to be taking very seriously the mission that God has given to the church. What is that mission? That mission doesn't depend on many of the things that we find so important. It's nice to have these vestments because of what they symbolize, if you understand the symbols, and all of these other things that we have. And and the various things that have come to us within the tradition, some of which are essential to the tradition, and some of which are customs that have come along with it. All of these things are fine, and all of these things are good. But the essence of who we are and what we are depends on knowing, first of all, that we're dependent on the Holy Spirit so that we can minister in that realm of power and, and charisma, grace, gifts, whereby God does those wonderful things we cannot do. And it is also dependent upon us actually receiving those gifts. For that we have, of course, the sacrament of confirmation, we also have sacrament of holy orders, which is, which is part of the, of, of the same thing. It is not, however, the entirety of it. I want you to understand that every one of you has your share in the ministry and 
your responsibility as part of the body of Christ to live according to everything we've heard, including whatever service, and that's what the word ministry means, whatever service you perform is as of the ability that God has given. We are dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Now that our Lord is not here and we see him no more in his physical presence on earth. We depend on the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill the mission that he has given to us, the command that he has given to us to be his witnesses and the representatives of his kingdom in this world and to lead people out of darkness into light to the truth of the gospel. That's also good news. You see, to put this in terms from the book of Exodus, here's the good news. The good news is that the Egyptian army is right behind us and that there's only the sea in front of us. And there is no bad news unless we decide we want to turn around and, and submit to that Egyptian army. The good news is that the situation is utterly hopeless if we don't depend on God to part the sea. The good news is also that we can depend on God and that he fulfills his promises. That's the situation we're in in the world. We are persecuted in the world. We have tribulation in the world. They speak evil of us the more we seek to serve Christ. In the world, there's darkness all around. The good news is we can depend on the Holy Spirit. He's dependable. And God's promises can be relied on. So the good news is we need the Holy Spirit. And the good news is we have the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is not a good news, bad news thing. It's only good news if we believe. He has left us not comfortless. He has sent his Holy Spirit to comfort us. And by comfort, I mean strengthen us, to lead us in all truth, to guide us, to empower us, to do what God does through us rather than working within our own limitations. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed as is most justly due. All might, majesty, dominion, power, and glory henceforth, world without end.